Good morning, and welcome to Namaste Today, a loving way to begin every day. I'm Christopher Watecki, your humble host and spiritual life coach. This webisode is for Friday, Friday, February 17th, 2017. Welcome to the end of the week. Namaste. Well, my friend and neighbor, I'm just going to warn you that today you may feel like pulling your hair out. We're in the final and tested step of the Aquarius vibration. Everything you've worked for may be tested in the next 24 hours. But don't worry, in your zodiac weather, I'll talk about how to get through it and what the weekend will bring. Then later in your tea time, it's time for part four of our series of Taking Back Your Power. And this one is one you've been told a thousand times, but never probably explained. But first, let's take a look at the moods of today and your weekend zodiac weather. This zodiac weather is for Friday, February 17th, 2017. Well, step 29 rules the day. This is the Grandmaster Step of Aquarius, and you may be tested on everything you've learned this month. Also, the moon is transiting Scorpio, making you defensive and perhaps a little paranoid. Let's take a look at the planets. Well, my dear friend, today may be a big test of your patience and your abilities to stay focused, but Sensei says it'll be all over by tomorrow. Step 29 rules the day. This is the final test to degree. In this case, it's Aquarius, and that means we are being tested on where we truly belong. We've spent 30 days now cutting and clearing lower vibration, cutting away from old energies we no longer belong with. And in this final 24 hours, you may be tested to go back to repeat old errors, or you may discover a flaw or holes in your plan. No matter what the magic words are, it's okay. It's only a test of the spiritual broadcast system. It does not represent the future that necessarily will come. They say in sports, keep your eye on the ball. Well, today, keep your eye on your heart. Mercury's at step 15 today. The mind is seeking peace. And the only way you're going to actually find peace and joy is if you're mindful of your heart. Everything else in you is shifting and may be tested. The moon, which represents our emotions, is in chapter 2 of Scorpio. And in the second deacon, this means that you are basically testing your emotional boundaries. Now the good news is, we've been working on emotional boundaries forever. And after the election last year and a lot of other Scorpio work, I would say everyone on earth is better at their emotional boundaries than they ever have been. The question today is, are your emotional boundaries appropriate for where you belong, where you're going, supporting your goals? These are emotional boundaries not based on survival, they're based on thrival. And so you're getting kind of a beta test of where you're emotionally strong, sensitive, or maybe not open enough to move forward with where you belong, to go ahead with that spiritual and energetic promotion. So today, take a little time and space with your feelings and map out your needs. Now, deep on the inside, we have a hella tug-of-war going on. On the one hand, Venus, Mars, and Uranus working as a stellium in Aries. These energies are birthing a new ego. Actually, the term is conceiving a new ego. This ego will not be birthed until later this spring. But we are beginning this process now, and the ego and the young child in you is learning to associate and behave according to where you belong and not behave to where you don't belong. However, at the same time, as you're trying to raise this new identity and new character inside yourself or craft one, you're also somewhat obsessed about getting what's fair to you, being in the right relationship, making sure everything is even and square, or justice. So there's this tug-of-war going on inside of us between this judge and jury looking for fairness and justice and this inner teenager that's just trying to do things right. You may feel this tug-of-war all weekend, and it's going to go on for some time. In fact, Venus today is at step nine, which means that you are opening up now to the strength you belong at. So you are now moving forward to the strength you belong at. You may realize you're at the strength you belong at simply by surviving the tests of today, but today it's part of it. 
Mars is at step 15, and that means the ego technically is just trying to stay in balance, just trying to keep things going all right. And again, that 15 means pay attention to the heart. So if you serve the heart today and you're mindful of the heart today, these balance issues will not be a big deal. But one thing that's very interesting, I'll just lay out right now, don't feel bad about your ability to perform. Don't feel bad about how much you have acted or not acted right now. We are truly in conception mode. And this mode's going to go on for some time. In fact, Venus is going to retrograde in Aries. It actually begins retrograding on March 4th and will retrograde until April 15th. A Venus retrograde in Aries means we will erase many of our bottom ego characteristics and replace them likely with a past life identity or a character we have been before in a past life. So the point is, don't judge yourself on your behavior or what you are right now because there's a lot of spiritual construction ahead and it's way too soon to start calling the race. And speaking of calling the race... Saturn will move to step 26 Sagittarius tonight before you go to bed. And between now and March 5th, you will be deciding and aiming for the story you were born to live. Now you may say, oh, I've been deciding if I'm going to buy this house. Ah, well, then that's the first scene of the story you were born to live, says Sensei. Interestingly enough, we're only one degree from the galactic center. And I believe on March 5th, when Saturn moves to step 27 and conjuncts the galactic center, we will in fact begin our journey and begin that story. Between now and March 5th, you are now deciding that story. And interestingly enough, it's time to decide as soon as you hold this place of where you belong. So literally as we wrap up Aquarius, we shift now into deciding what should the story be now that we truly are where we belong. Now, starting on Saturday, we move to zero degree Pisces, and on Sunday, it'll be one degree Pisces, and the moon will be moving into Sagittarius. That means this weekend will be a bit of a cloudy, gloomy, and spiritual weekend where you're basically assessing your spiritual story. It's kind of like you just ran a huge race, and now you sit down, panting, trying to kind of go over the race you just ran. And so karma, my friend, will begin to start pouring in here starting this weekend. And I want you to know that any feelings that come rushing in, particularly on Saturday in the Step Zero Vortex Day, these feelings are highly likely past life feelings. If they come flooding in, basically what you want to do is sit back, nurture, and observe. Because this year, I think in Pisces, we're going to be doing some major clearing of where our soul is and we're going to, by the end of the month, find our faith. Now that brings me to our next topic, which is our weekly tea time. Go steep yourself some tea, and let's have our final tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is the final in a four-part series on taking back your power. So far, I spoke about commitments, detachment, and patience, and how these three concepts can take you out of your power if not well managed. Well, today, I'm going to give you a topic that will put you in your power, and the topic is faith. As George Michael says or sings, you got to have faith. And may the late George Michael, by the way, reincarnate in peace. But what does faith mean anyways? Is it something you just pull out of a hat? Is it tied to a religion? How does one really have faith? Well, in my experience, faith comes down to a connection you have to the universe. It's literally the connection between you, God, and everything. And that connection can come out in God, but you could be, for instance, a trapper living in the woods in the 1700s, and your faith would come from nature which I argue comes from God. So I really believe it is our connection to the universe, our connection to God. Therefore, people who have no faith are currently experiencing no connection. Faith, in my experience, is something that has to be built over time. Just like courage has to be built over time. You don't have courage. 
you have to do something courageous. And once you do something courageous, you have courage. Faith is very similar. You actually have to have and hold faith over time to build faith, in my opinion. So the good news is, faith is something you can actually build and have all on your own, and you don't need a dime to actually do it. You just need to take the time and space. Now, when I began this audio blog journey back in November, I was talking about a split in human consciousness, and the split was between fear and hope. In fact, hope actually is the seed of faith. One must have hope for a while and hold the space open, and that hope will turn into peace over time. And then over more time, I find that peace will turn into true faith, a faith you can rely on, a faith you can turn on. But at first, it all comes down to a choice. That choice in the very beginning of faith is to choose to have hope. Then it turns into a practice where you're practicing this hope day after day. And later it does build into that big F word, faith. Now, I learned faith kind of the hard way, like all of us, but because I'm a spiritual philosopher and astrologer, as I'm going through all my torments in life, I'm also studying how this whole thing works. As a Taurus, I end up having to build my faith over money. In fact, there was a time when I was working full-time in television and receiving a full-time check, which was actually a huge feat in itself in L.A., really. I shouldn't have had faith issues. But there came the time when I decided, that's it, I'm going to do readings, and I'm going to only focus on spirituality and leave the TV business. All right. Now, at the time, I had hope everything would be okay, <laughs> okay, like I was in that first stage, but no faith. In fact, I was very worried about coming up with rent. I was very worried about literally enough customers walking through the door to keep me eating. And it's kind of a terrifying thing at first if you've ever gone from being employed to uh, working independently like that and relying on sales. It's a huge leap of faith, as they say. And what had to happen is, is that I had to uh, have faith, basically, and hold this faith uh, every time until rent would come. And every time I would worry and every time I would finally, the rent would show up at the very last time, enough money for the rent. That's the biggest charge of the month. And over time, I started to develop a faith in the universe, a faith in myself. And I paid attention to what it really takes to create faith. So let me give you a few simple steps here to build your faith on something. First, it begins with step zero, I protect. You really can't change any of your consciousness unless you set aside special time and space to change. So you have to create a quiet time and a space. You have to have not necessarily an altar, but a sacred place that you go to and you kneel, so to speak. And this tells your whole self that you're serious about this. And there's something about making that time and space. I found that until I did this, I couldn't build real faith until I took myself seriously. I can't just be driving down the street worried in the car. You have to at some point create an actual ritual and say, okay, this is it. We're handling this right now. And I think the universe gets it. Then you put your left hand over your heart. And regarding your question of faith, so let's say my question is, will I have rent this month? You have to ask your heart, do you feel something is wrong and you're not going to have rent? Do you feel something's wrong? Now, my heart would always answer, no, I don't feel like anything's wrong, but, 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 I would say my mind would be full of stuff. But you have to ask yourself in this process, after you're in the sacred space, do you feel there's actually a problem here, or is this worry? And if this is worry, we'll go back to that in a minute. But if you don't feel if there's a problem here, everything feels fine, then the next question you ask yourself is, has God or the universe ever let you down like this in the past? All right? And sometimes God has. And if God has, that's probably part of your worry. But you may not necessarily have that problem right now. Now, in my case, God has never let me down in the past. Honestly, as I process it, I always, always was saved. No matter how much stress and tension I was in, I have always gotten some way to have mercy on my soul, honestly. So if that's the case, if it hasn't happened to you in the past and you don't feel like there's anything wrong right now, then the question is, are you willing to give God the credit 
Okay, this is the point when it turns into hope. This is the hope stage where you go, okay, there's no rational reason. I don't feel anything wrong. God's never screwed me over in the past. I'm going to hope everything works out. I'm going to choose hope. And this is a choice. You have to actually choose the hope here and officially sign off on it on the little X in order to make this happen. If this happens, this is now the peace stage where you try to keep the peace. You have to keep the peace until when rent is due, until the moment comes where evidence will show you the examination date. And on the examination date, if everything works out the way you want it to, then this is where you harvest faith. You will grin ear to ear and you will be happy as a little child because, oh my gosh, it worked. I'm okay. Everything's fine. And the question right there is, all right, there's your faith. And be grateful for the faith. And the thing about being grateful for the faith is you're saying to the universe, I'm so grateful this happened. I'm so grateful for this faith. And I want more of this faith, more and more. I don't want to go through this ever again. Now, a couple of notes. A person must protect their faith. Once you have established faith, you got to the end of the month, you can't let someone else ruin it. You can't let someone else suddenly a week later go, aren't you worried that you won't have enough sales to make rent? You go, no, 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 no. I've already been through the faith. You don't let it in. At that point, you are stubborn and you don't let anything ruin your faith. And when something happens in your life, you want to reinforce your faith. You want to go back and go, ah, here's more evidence that things are good. Here's more evidence. There's no time to, there's nothing to worry. So to build faith, um, you must protect your faith and hold your faith. Now, what happens is when something like a big question comes up and you've done all this inner work and connecting to the universe and connecting to your soul and knowing over time, indeed, things are okay, then you actually worry less and less. But you must face your fears in order to have faith. You can't have rumbling fears going on in there and also try to have faith. And that's the karma clearing part of things. We're going to be doing the karma clearing part next week. And that's one of the reasons why I brought up faith, because I believe we are all building a new faith in the sign of Pisces. And this is a new faith that we haven't had in a long time. And for some, it might just be the seeds of hope. But for those who are ready, it is a new faith. Now, going back to the original beginning here, what if you touch your hand on your heart and you do have a worry that something feels wrong and something bad is going to happen? Well, if this happens, you need to actually, again, we're getting to know yourself in the universe, your connection to the universe. You have to interview this worry. Have you had this worry before? Is this worry part of a pattern? The last time you worried, how did it turn out? Is there any evidence now that you should be worrying? I mean, I know you're worrying because it's happened, but is there any evidence now right here in the second that there's a reason to actually worry? And if there isn't, then you have to practice faith and go, okay, there's no reason to worry. I'm going to put down a boundary here and I'm not going to let myself worry about this till the end of the month. I'm going to put down a boundary here and I'm not going to let myself worry until I actually see a text message on his phone from some girl. Okay, like I know a lot of my clients. And you put up this boundary. And basically, if the fear comes back, you reinforce the boundary. Hey, I told myself I'm not going to worry about this until I have. Now, believe it or not, even if the news is bad, you're going to have faith in yourself because you've built this uh, rapport with your spirit and this rapport with checking in and this adds to great faith so next week my friend is the start of a new faith you're going to clear your karmic worries and you're going to affirm your spiritual story in the sign of pisces and as these happen as these old things come up that question your faith you have to ask your heart is this my future is this my past and if you don't want it let it go it's now time to start diving in and building a faith. And this faith, in my opinion, is very important for future Earth situations coming up. People think that Trump in this moment is the bad or hard moment. Oh, no. I think Trump is the drill sergeant getting us all into faith and getting us into spiritual shape. And it is now time to step into yours. Incidentally, just for a little time frame, if you focus on your faith this month, the spirituality and the planet say you'll be harvesting it by September. So you'll be feeling it and it'll be rock solid and you'll be grateful. All right, my friend. Well, I am so grateful for you. I am grateful for all the beautiful comments, by the way, that I get on Facebook and everywhere else. 
I also want to remind you that I'm having a reading sale right now. If you buy a half hour reading at the regular price, I'll give you a 15 free, free 15 minute free follow up that you can use any time this year. It's great to a one, for a one two spiritual. Uh, investigation of what's going on and if you need any help releasing this karma if you need any help identifying this karma or affirming past lives that's what I am super good at well I hope you have a wonderful and spiritual weekend I'll be back on Monday with more until then remember I love you and live love be live love be